Well, good Monday to you all, West Elementary School. Hope you've done well over the past week. Got a little warmer weather, which is nice. And uh, hope you're all staying safe. Hi, this is Miss Collins, your APE teacher. How's everybody doing? I hope everybody's having fun and enjoying your time at home right now. Hello, everybody. Miss Pinnell here. Uh, I am outside right now. I've got a, another activity for you all to try out. So, Salut tout le monde. Donc, uh, j'espère que ça va. Aujourd'hui, uh, on a reçu le paquet de Imperfect Foods, la nourriture imparfaite. Welcome to West Elementary Field Day 2020. Yeah. I'm really excited. We're going to be giving out cash prizes this year. What's up, Andover APE? This is Mr. Sudak here, just checking in, hoping everyone stay active and healthy. Hey everybody, good morning. We're gonna try something new today where I actually try to teach you the same lesson I would have taught you in class. So first I'm gonna start with a warm up, and I'm gonna ask you to use what you learned yesterday. Hi, I'm Mr. Kruger. Hi, Mrs. Carlton. And I'm Miss Murphy, and we're the web coordinators. And while we're away from each other, always keep a smile on your face, kindness in your heart, and a book in your hands. Keep reading and thinking. Life is about a balance. You don't have too much of one thing, you know. Too much of watching TV, or too much of you know, being a couch potato. <laughs> so, uh, until next time, hope you're all well. Mom and dads, thanks you again for you know, sending me emails and pictures and videos and things of that nature. I completely, completely love seeing all those things. So, we'll see you later. May the force be with you. Good afternoon. I'm honored to be here today, virtually, to offer thanks on behalf of the Andover School Committee to all of you for your work during this unusual school year. As you can see, I stand in unfortunate fellowship with those of you who haven't had an opportunity to get a haircut since February vacation. And that might be the least weird thing this community has had to endure over the past several months. We've all missed normal, in-person classes. We've missed athletic contests. We've missed hallway conversations and school lunch lines. If anyone painted the rock in front of the high school with a newly controversial message, I've missed that too. But because of all of you, we have not missed learning or the important sense of community each one of you foster with and among students every day. From the bottom of my heart, I wanna thank you for all you've done this year under such trying circumstances. We started the school year hearing from Jonathan Mooney last August with his encouragement that everyone in the district meet kids where they are, and that really became a reality post-March. From the safety and comfort of my own home, I've watched educators bring engaging, fun, and really creative lessons to students. And importantly, I've watched you check in to continue to let students know they're cared for, not alone, and important. That sense of calm and normalcy has been incredibly important. As with past years, I hope that the school committee has been successful supporting your work and that you've felt empowered to push traditional boundaries of teaching and find creative ways to reach each and every Andover student. The contribution of every single person in the district is necessary and very much appreciated. Whether you've been remotely interacting with students, providing meals during the closure, making sure our schools are clean and safe, or paying the bills on time. You really make an important impact, and your dedication to our schools and to our students is truly what drives the success of the entire Andover community. No matter what your summer plans include, please take a moment to reflect on a job well done. My school committee colleagues and I thank you for continuing to make Andover a wonderful place to live. Enjoy your time off. Good afternoon, everyone. Let me begin this closing ceremony by saying thank you. And given what a year it has been, I'd like to say that again, thank you. We've just completed what has probably been the most challenging year of our careers. It's only through the collective efforts of everyone in the district 
that we have provided such a high degree of continuity and connection for our students and their families. We've also worked together in ways that brought us closer as a professional team. There are no words to fully express what each of you has experienced. This year has stretched us, exhausted us, and yet also renewed our core understanding that it is relationships that sustain our growth and enable us to reach beyond our perceived limitations. Each of you has stepped up and been a leader within your own area of responsibility. And speaking of leaders, I'm sure that many of you are acutely interested in learning who will be moving into key positions of leadership within the district. I promise to share that information in just a few minutes. The pace and demands of this year left little time for reflection. Even during our April break, it seemed we were just catching our breath in order to push through into June. So let's take a couple of minutes and look back on 2019-20. Despite all the unanticipated challenges, the year was more productive than we might have predicted. We made significant progress at the elementary level as we deepened our work in literacy and made effective use of our classroom libraries. Our efforts produced remarkable improvements in reading performance and significant reductions in the disparities experienced by our students with special needs. We also strengthened our use of data as a diagnostic tool to target interventions and differentiate instruction so that all students receive both the challenge and the support they need. We benefited from professional development in our One Community, One Nation program that's helping us integrate social studies, literacy, and the arts into a transformative experience for our students in community, culture, and civics. In addition, our eighth grade teachers restructured their curriculum to focus on civics and civic engagement. We significantly advanced our work in social-emotional learning as most elementary teachers implemented responsive classroom strategies with morning and closing meetings. Our middle schools continue to work on a new schedule that will embed daily time for social emotional learning, and the high school strengthened H block. Teams from two middle schools completed the intensive year long program in social emotional learning and school climate at William James College. And our focus on students' mental health resulted in more funding for services and the expansion of our tier three program. After years of effort and advocacy on the part of our kindergarten teachers, parents, and our school committee, Tuition for kindergarten will no longer exist, and all of Andover's kindergarten students will reap the benefit of a full-day program. In the area of facilities, we saw improvements at many schools and major advances toward providing a new school for the students at West Elementary and Shawsheen Preschool. That's just a quick summary of what happened between September and March. You actually accomplished so much more in moving your practice forward. It's important to remember that we didn't lose those gains, even though the pandemic forced us to pivot our attention to a new challenge. However, I'm sure what's uppermost on your minds is the past three months of remote learning. In March, the world turned upside down. Isolation replaced connection and community. Unfamiliarity and insecurity replaced our normal confidence in our abilities to teach and reach our students. None of us signed up to teach or lead in a remote learning environment. Everything was different and everything required learning how to use new tools and strategies while at the same time caring for our own family members. When we first closed, I shared with you that as educators, we too are first responders. We offer critical support to students and families in a time of crisis. Just as medical staff bring reassurance and knowledge of how best to serve patients, our role has been to provide students with a sense of confidence, connection, normalcy, and meaning. Our years of training and experience enable us to reach across virtual boundaries of physical distancing and assist our students to learn through a new medium. And our understanding of students' social and emotional needs enable us to connect with them in ways that brought engagement and smiles. Instead of giving in to discouragement, you rallied to a seemingly impossible task. You learned to use new online tools such as Google Meets and virtual instructional strategies. You held car parades and visited students' homes to deliver messages of hope and connection. 
You produce videos, sometimes to educate and sometimes to simply sustain the spirit of community that lets students know that we're all still connected. You taught new material, provided feedback on online assignments, led virtual field trips and spirit weeks, provided teletherapy, searched out students who were not participating, hosted virtual talent shows, exhibited student art and performances online, cheered graduating seniors on their last lap around the high school, and coached parents on how to support children. You found virtual ways to celebrate students' accomplishments and honor such important transitions as 5th, 8th, and 12th grade graduations. You showed up, stood up, and were present for our students. And I'm not referring only to teachers and administrators. Our nutrition services staff reached out with meals. Our custodial staff ensured buildings were top to bottom clean and disinfected. Our instructional assistants not only supported teachers' efforts, but held online recess and other activities that maintained their own connection with students. As a result, our students had learning experiences that were truly meaningful, though perhaps not as rich as we could have provided in the classroom. Still, you move students forward, and you can take pride in that. More than anything else, you demonstrated to students and parents how much you care. You communicated through your words and actions that you know them, you value them, and you were not going to leave anyone behind. Though at this point you're mentally exhausted, I hope you're emotionally exhilarated from feeling the appreciation that this community has for all that you have done. What most stands out to me is that you accomplish all of this together. You recognize that no one could be successful alone and that we needed to collaborate closely as a team. You understood that we had to align our work and build on each other's knowledge and insight in order to provide consistency for our students. I doubt that Andover has ever seen such a deep commitment to collaboration. You put all else aside and contributed wherever and whenever you could. And many of you tackled these professional challenges while also dealing with the highly personal impact of the pandemic. Some of our colleagues have lost parents and loved ones or have had their households disrupted when a spouse or parent lost their employment and income. When this happened, you filled in for each other and supported each other. I know you will continue to thank your colleagues for all the support they've extended over the past three months. Unfortunately, the challenges of the year didn't end with remote learning. Just as we were about to turn the corner, the nation exploded as racism and prejudice that are often hidden in subtle and institutional forms became exposed and explicit. The deaths of multiple black and brown people at the hands of police and vigilantes were a stark reminder of America's long history of racism and intolerance. And just as you had stepped up to the pandemic, you stepped up to have conversations with students, helping them understand what was happening in the streets and to see that they too could find ways to stand for unity and against racism. Over the past four years, we've worked diligently on culturally responsive practices. This includes the work at the elementary level on the concepts of cultural appreciation and civil rights that are embedded in one community, one nation. Cultural responsiveness is reflected in our elementary classroom libraries and middle school and high school reading selections that highlight diversity. And we took personal ownership of this work through the secondary level facing history in ourselves, professional development on bias and microaggressions as well as the efforts of our Cultural Climate Committee to create identity-safe schools. As the school committee and I stated in the anti-racism statement we issued recently on behalf of the district, our work in this area will never be finished. The roots of racism and prejudice are deep and long and will require the efforts of each of us working individually and collectively to overcome. Although we are breaking for the summer, when we return in the fall, we must seize this moment to initiate difficult and courageous conversations about race and prejudice. This work will demand that we have the courage to look below the surface and address dis disproportionality rates and opportunity gaps. The ways in which we use the current situation as an opportunity to uncover the biases within our institutions, ourselves, and each other will define us in the future. I'm very proud of the Cultural Climate Committee and our school committee for putting forward a powerful and bold equity policy that will be voted on at the next meeting. It holds the district to a high standard. The policy sets a goal for educational equity that, quote, a student's identity no longer predicts how that student fares in the district, unquote. Based on the strength and talent of the staff, 
I'm confident that together with our students, we can be the change. As there is more work to do within our district to educate ourselves and our students about racism and prejudice, there's also more work ahead to refine our remote learning strategies. We all realize that school won't start in the fall the way we no it normally does. We're likely to be in a hybrid situation of balancing in-person and remote learning, with some students needing to be taught remotely full time. In addition, the expectations for time on learning and grading will be higher next year. We will have to make our best effort at providing in a hybrid situation all that we will provide in person. We learned a lot this past year. Going into next year, we will have better tools and a better understanding of how we can help our students be most successful. I ask that each of you take a couple of minutes in the coming days to reflect on what worked and what we could improve and to send that reflection to me. Your insights will help me and our planning task force to construct a map of the road ahead so that when August arrives, we have the structures, tools, and strategies in place to the, do the most effective job we can under these challenging circumstances. As we end this year, we'll be saying goodbye to some very special people who've dedicated their life, lives to Andover. In a few moments, you'll be treated to a brief video about our 2020 retirees. First, however, I want to acknowledge two people who provided exceptional leadership for Andover and who are not retiring, but instead moving on to other challenging positions. I want to thank Nancy Koch for all the wonderful work she did to support our students with special needs, particularly our most challenged students who are in out-of-district placements. Nancy's moving on to become Director of Student Services for Newburyport. I also want to thank Phil Conrad as he moves on to become Superintendent of the Bedford Public Schools and bringing stability and a strong set of core values to the high school, as well as a new schedule and innovative opportunities for students. Phil has demonstrated that you can make an institution better through care, connection, courage, and leadership. And now, with tremendous excitement about all the good things that lie ahead, I want to welcome several people who are joining our Andover team. Cindy Button, who has been a transportation director in Maine, will be taking on the role of transportation administrator. I know that Mary Lou Walsh is a very hard act to follow, given all the years and care she has put into that program. But I'm confident Cindy will build on Mary Lou's work and take us to new heights. Meanwhile, Catherine Ryan, who has been an elementary director for student services in Arlington, will take Nancy's place as our assistant director of student services. And Steve Nembrico will be coming to us from Greenfield to take up the reins of Chief Operations Officer as Paul Szymanski steps away from that position. I'm certain you'll make all three of these newcomers to Andover feel welcome as they begin to contribute their expertise to the district and the community. Next, I want to thank Colleen McBride for so graciously and competently interrupting her retirement to finish out this school year as interim principal at South Elementary. Colleen truly went above and beyond. And finally, let's applaud two of our current team members who, despite all the challenges of 2019-20, are enthusiastic about taking on even greater levels of responsibility. The new principal of South will be Brenda Lee, who has been serving as assistant principal at Sanborn. And the current assistant principal, Caitlin Brown, will be moving her office just a short distance as she becomes principal of Andover High School. Congratulations, Brenda and Caitlin. We've already seen great things that you can do, and we know that both of you will provide exemplary leadership for staff and students alike. As I said at the beginning of these remarks, I want to thank all of you for your exceptional efforts this past year, and particularly these past three months. Every day I consider it a privilege to work with you. I hope you have a wonderful summer. And now the year could not end without our acknowledging our retirees and then hearing a very special performance from the Day 180 Band. Again, thank you for what you do, and most of all, thank you for who you are. Have a good summer.
We work at Shawshim, beloved Shawshim. The staff are wonderful and nice. They work so hard to make online learning something fun, exciting, and bright. They learn to seesaw and Google Meet. They zoomed and texted all day long. They are the best bunch of staff in all the world. I love you, Shawshin, everyone. Hi, everyone. It's a wrap. Let the summer begin. Wait, what? The barbershops are open? And we have to make another video? Pip, hooray, you made it. Yippee, we are on to summer. It has been an extraordinary year, one we will long remember. All of you have given your all, and I want to thank everyone on staff for jumping in and doing whatever it took to connect with students and families and provide continuity in learning. You have been amazing. Thank you, and have a great summer. Wow, this is a year we'll never forget. But when faced with the challenges, you were all set. You rose to the top and kept that magic alive. You deserve much, much more than a virtual high five. So go relax, rest your brains, especially those eyes. Have a great summer. You deserve it. Goodbye. I want to say a huge thank you to all of Andover Public Schools teachers and staff. I hope that you all have a restful and rejuvenating summer. It is well deserved and thank you so much for all you do. Thank you so much for everything you've done during remote learning. And for public school, you're amazing. I wanna give a special shout out to all of our High Plain Elementary School staff who day after day just continue to amaze me. I don't know how you did it, but you certainly have been my inspiration. Thanks everyone. We hope you have a great, happy and restful summer. I wanna give a heartfelt thank you to teachers, the assistants, the administrative assistants, the custodians, the cafeteria workers, central office, everybody else associated with Andover Public Schools. You are amazing. Looking forward to a great summer. Turn your computers off and enjoy the beach, lake, or just sitting around. Thank you all. Take care. I just wanted to take a minute and just say thank you so much for all your hard work, for the students, the families, for each other. I really, truly appreciate it Whether coming in and helping us with the signs, with the senior celebration, with the bags. Uh, you guys have been incredible and I hope that you have some rest this summer. A big congratulations to all the teachers and staff and assistants for the amazing job that you all have been able to do with remote learning every single day. Um, you learned so quickly and were so passionate and committed to our kids and it was awe-inspiring. Wishing you all the best for a restful summer. Hi everyone, I'm sending you my very special thanks for your tremendous collaboration during remote learning. You've made incredible learning happen for our students and we appreciate you. This year we all face a new challenge. You met this challenge, empathy, strength, and professionalism every single day along the way. I thank you so much for what you've done for our students. Have a great summer. Your dedication and commitment to give your very, very best in teaching your students has been commendable. So to all of our teachers and staff, I say thank you for a job well done. Be safe and have a great summer. Peace. We did an amazing job these last three months. We learned a ton. I know I learned a lot. Thank you for everything you did for all of our students. Now's the time to rest. Now's the time to be with our families and our friends and enjoy the summer. Thank you again. Take care. We want to give a show to all of the staff in Andover, especially here at Sanborn School for doing an amazing job in the last few months. And we hope that you have a relaxing summer. Thanks everyone. <laughs> Thank you seems like an understatement given all the challenges of this school year, but you met them every step of the way. Your grit, your high level of collaboration, the way you stayed connected to your students is nothing short of miraculous. I just want to thank everyone. I want to thank our wonderful special ed teachers, our specialists, our teacher assistants, our contracted service providers, our wonderful nurses, 
our mental health professionals, everyone, you have inspired me beyond words over the last few months. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great summer. We are so proud of all the hard work you have done, and you all deserve a really relaxing summer. Good luck. Bye-bye. Don't worry, 180-day band. I know I will not be taking over for you next year. Um, that's just the best way I knew to thank everybody. Have a great summer. Thank you and goodbye. Jackie Barry, Doherty Middle School. 22 years of service at APS. Linda Beals, Self Elementary School, 25 years of service at APS. Teresa Constantino, Andover High School, 39 years of service at APS. Tracy Crowley, Self Elementary School, seven years of service at APS. Nancy DeSalvo, High Plain Elementary School, 30 years of service at APS. Jennifer Evans, Sanborn Elementary School, 11 years of service at APS. Ellen Gaudiano, Andover High School, 24 years of service at APS. Faith Goldstein, South Elementary School, 26 years of service at APS. Sarah Letsky, West Elementary School, 18 years of service at APS. Kim Lieberman, Woodhill Middle School, 24 years of service at APS. Maureen McRae, Andover High School, 18 years of service at APS. Ellen Maltzman, Sanborn Elementary School, 17 years of service at APS. Mary Patricia Moriarty, Woodhill Middle School, 12 years of service at APS. Bertie Rizzo, West Middle School, 11 years of service at APS. Suzanne Rowe, Andover High School, 14 years of service at APS. Carolyn Broyle, West Elementary School, 11 years of service at APS. Paul Szymanski, Assistant Superintendent, 8 years of service at APS. Sharon Tates, West Middle School, 29 years of service at APS. Kathleen Thornton, Bancroft Elementary School, 33 years of service at APS. Mary Lou Walsh, Transportation Manager, 21 years of service at APS. Paul Willis, Andover High School, 29 years of service at APS. Daphne Winders, Sanborn Elementary, 24 years of service at APS.
standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. When the broken heart There is still a chance that they will see There will be an answer, let it be